As the Vietnam War dragged on into 1967, American morale both at home and abroad dwindled. And in the mind of at least one patriotic, red-blooded, and possibly drunk American, these desperate times called for desperate measures. It was thus that former Marine John Chick Donahue decided he would embark on one of the most exceptional beer runs in history. Working his way across the Pacific Ocean and charming his way onto military planes, helicopters, and bases, Donahue traveled through perilous war zones by telling a single but slightly modified lie, all with the goal of meeting up with soldiers from his hometown to share in the simple pleasure of drinking a beer. Donahue, known in the community as Chick, grew up in the 1960s in Inwood, a primarily Irish-American neighborhood in New York City that was packed with pubs and bars. After the U.S. intervened in the Vietnam War, Donahue claimed he found himself attending over 20 military funerals. The deceased were all young men from his hometown. At the same time, anti-war sentiment was on the rise. By the end of 1967, 40,000 young men were being drafted per month, the American death toll had surpassed 15,000, and over 100,000 American soldiers had been wounded. With these figures only on the rise, one of the biggest anti-war gatherings took place in front of the Lincoln Memorial on October 21st. That November, Donahue went into Doc Fiddler's, a bar in Inwood, to drink and bitterly complain about the protesters. At the time, he was working as a merchant seaman, having served for a couple of years in the Marine Corps. George Lynch, the bartender, shared Donahue's sense of appreciation and respect for the troops abroad, and according to Donahue himself, Lynch was also, quote, going on about the demonstrators marching through Central Park. It was in the middle of this diatribe that the bartender was struck by an idea, reportedly asking Donahue if he could borrow his Siemens papers, telling him that someone should go to Vietnam to buy the Inwood soldiers a beer. While Chick Donahue was unwilling to hand over his documentation, he stated that whenever he found himself in Vietnam, he would buy the soldiers a beer. Spurred to action, he told Lynch, quote, I'll take care of it for you. The very next day, Lynch brought the mother of one of Chick's friends, Nick Collins, who had been deployed to the bar. The bartender assured the mother that Donahue would be going to Vietnam to seek out her son. Donahue felt obligated to do so, and right then, a mission was born. Chick Donahue packed a duffel bag with 18 or so Pabst Blue Ribbon beers, gathered a list of names and units of local friends who were stationed in the war-torn country, and headed to the Union Hall in search of a position that would get him to Vietnam. His prior tour to the country with the Marine Corps had been calm, with him never seeing any conflict or even signs of it. To Donahue, it was like, quote, it was the Bronx or something. Thanks to that experience, he thought the trip would go quickly and without any bumps. He was dearly mistaken. To start his journey, Donahue took a job on the Drake Victory, a ship carrying ammunitions to Vietnam from New York. Traveling on board for two months, he saw himself in need of consuming the original beers, but he made sure to restock immediately once the ship docked in Kinon, South Vietnam, early in 1968. Shortly after his arrival, American military police officers were sent to inspect the Drake Victory. Donahue recognized the unit insignia and realized that they came from the 127th Military Police Company, who else was part of that unit? None other than Nick Collins, whose mother he had sat in front of at Doc Fiddler's a couple of months earlier. Chick quickly came up with a lie that he believed would take him to his friend. He claimed to be Collins' stepbrother, and that he had traveled all that way because their mother had passed. Astoundingly, it worked. Upon being summoned, Collins later recalled, quote, I'm looking over their ship, and the next thing is I see Chicky Donahue. I said, what the hell are you doing here? He says, I came to see you. Donahue shared a beer with his friend, who was both shocked and glad to see him. That same night, they went out for drinks at a bar, where the second happy coincidence took place. A Texan man at the bar, who Donahue spotted by the patch on his shoulder, was part of the 1st Air Cavalry Division. It turned out that another friend on his list just so happened to be part of that division, too. He brought out the same sob story that had gotten into Collins, replacing the phantom stepbrother with the identity of the second friend. The Texan agreed to bring him along to Quang Chi, and Chick was on his way to the second stop on his beer run the very next morning. Mm -hmm. 
After talking his way onto a military plane, Donahue arrived in the Kaesan area of the Quangche province. He relieved himself on the grass after landing since the plane had no restroom and he received a stern reprimand. For a minute, he thought his cover would be blown, but the risk was soon diffused. It was particularly important to Donahue that he meet up with this next friend, Rick Duggan, since they had lived in the same Manhattan building when growing up. Their childhood friendship had survived literal war and needed to be celebrated with a beer. Donahue chose to tell a sergeant the truth about his visit, since he got a positive vibe from him. The sergeant was impressed with Chick's determination to get a beer in Rick Duggan's hand and called Duggan by the radio. When Duggan arrived at the landing site, he took Donahue with him and even dressed him in camouflage temporarily, afraid that his civilian clothes might put him at risk. They shared a pleasant evening drinking with Duggan's military companions. Only 20 minutes after they were done, however, the situation changed drastically. Combat broke out, and Donahue had to live through fire exchanges with the enemy while unarmed. It was a terrifying night, and probably one of the most dangerous moments that Chick faced while making his beer run. Thankfully, both Rick Duggan, who had survived the war to later become a New York City police lieutenant, and Chick Donahue came out of the incident unscathed. The following morning, Donahue caught a flight out on a military helicopter, but he was too late to return to his ship. Instead, he visited his friend Nick Collins once more, who helped him hitch yet another flight, this time towards Saigon. At Saigon, Donahue was informed that the outpost he was looking for was in Long Bean, about 25 miles away from where he was. Using the stepbrother with a dead mother story once more, this time in reference to his friend Bobby Pappas, he managed to get another ride, this time aboard a military convoy. He was driven to the gate of the Long Bean military base, where he repeated his story, and he was let in. Once inside, he met up with the next friend on his list. They were able to share a few beers, and Pappas asked Donahue about Saigon and the recent conflict there. Chick absentmindedly made up a new lie that the war was almost over, and that the Saigon hit had opened the door to negotiations. That night they partied at the NCO club. Later, Bobby Pappas would recall, quote, Seeing Chick gave me a lot of encouragement that I was going to make it back. After a long night, Chick got a car ride back to Saigon and a fresh set of clothes with help from Pappas. While Donahue was on his way back to Saigon, Long Bean was overrun. The sky north of Saigon reportedly blew up, worrying the New York beer trekker. He believed Pappas was dead and could not possibly continue with his journey without knowing for sure. He was driven back up to Long Bean. Bobby Pappas met up with him at the gate, where he was originally received and had the opportunity to yell at him for saying the war would soon be over. About this particular moment, Donahue would later recall, quote, I thought for sure he was dead. Here he was calling me every rotten name in the book. It just made me happy. They shared a few more drinks and then Pappas ensured that Donahue made it back to Saigon. With arguably the most dangerous and greatest beer run ever completed, John Chick Donahue headed back home to Inwood. Donahue returned home safe and sound, reportedly entering the by then named Chambers Pub to exclamations from George Lynch, the bartender who had helped him concoct the crazy plan, quote, he's here, he's alive. Soon enough, Chick's tab would be regularly paid for by local customers and regulars at Chambers and other inward establishments. He's claimed, quote, needless to say, it was a while before I had to pay for my own beer. Despite his complete and detailed recollection of the events, and the growing local celebrity status that he achieved, many questioned whether Chick Donahue had actually gone on his legendary beer run. In order to set the record straight, in June 2017, Donahue released his book, The Greatest Beer Run Ever, a true story of a friendship stronger than war, self-published and co-written with J.T. Malloy, a former reporter for the New York Daily News. Interviews with friends, photos, and travel documents collected along his journey have also seemingly confirmed his incredible tale. Following the adventure, Donahue made his living for the rest of his life as a sand hog, an urban miner digging train and sewage tunnels deep within the New York City bedrock. On June 30th, 2015, the legendary beer runner reunited simultaneously with all of his Vietnam Station friends for the first time since embarking on his beer run as part of a promotional short for Pabst Blue Ribbon, the brand of beer he'd originally carried with him on the Drake Victory. Victory. 